Okay, hello. Uh, I'm going to try and share my screen in usual clunky fashion, but I'll give it a go. There we go. So if you um, if you came to the um, Wakefield meeting, virtual meeting in March, then I'm sorry, this is going to feel quite repetitive. There are only so many days in a month and I've spent a lot of them doing other stuff, so it's not going to be fantastically different. Um, it might be a bit condensed because I, I had a bit longer there, though. Um, so first off, I'm going to do a bit of a quick run through the things that, that I have on my stand, given that it is a virtual show. Uh, so some of the little things that would be available, such as the um, the, the Delta Pi case, which is a, a really small compact case for a Raspberry Pi 3 or a Pi 4, uh, comes with a, a custom adapter board that you can see there for a Pi 3 at the side, but has a similar one for a Pi 4 with two micro USB ports. Um, as an optional extra, you could try and cram cables in there if you really wanted to. Um, turning it on and off might become tricky. Um, but there you go, it'd be a, a reasonably simple thing to do. Uh, the next ones are the cheap and cheerful Thorin set of cases. So there are some really, really simple wooden cases for the um, Raspberry Pi 3 and 4 with a, a selection of cutouts to suit your preferences, really, and then some slightly expanded ones should you want to add a hard drive underneath or something like that and just gives it a bit more of a, 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 a robust feel. And then there's the um, the disc round cases, which uh, some of the technical elves have recently purchased, and the um, ghostly ones, which you can see there, and that really doesn't do it justice. If you can still see my camera and I can get the light right, you can see what kind of day glow effect um, the acrylic has, especially on the edges. It, it looks quite day glow. Um, the Slim Jim case, um, which is a, a media center case for, as you can see there, the iGEP version 5. Um, it'll also fit an, uh, a Raspberry Pi 3 or a Raspberry Pi 4 and an SSD. Uh, and it has markings and cutouts for those. And, and they're, they're proving particularly popular on Etsy with people who want custom holes cutting in for things like um, TV hats and things like that. So probably, I'm guessing, not necessarily risk cost users uh, and are more likely to be coming from another particular OS. The um, Pilot case, which is a, a, a development from an earlier case with a slimmer build, more ventilation, um, and, and just a, a sleeker look. So there's, there's one there um, where you can see the um, holes on the front for the Pi 4. Uh, and more honeycombing on the bottom so that it's um, cooler even with a, a, a Raspberry Pi 4, but at, at that point it still kind of needs that, that extra active cooling inside. And then the uh, Pi Pod 4, so the, the first thing that we ever did was the Pi Pod um, with, a, Pi Pod, with a, a Raspberry Pi 2, I believe. Um, and then we've we've developed that. Didn't take much developing for the Raspberry Pi 3 and the 3B, but from, for the 4, we've had to completely redesign the carrier plate and use the extender board to bring everything out to to the one side to make it easier to uh, to work with. So the 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 bigger things that we do uh, at the moment, and we originally launched this at uh, London last year, is the Pi Hard 4, um, which is uh, I would say an upgrade to uh, the original Pyard, but it's a complete rebuild <clears throat> with a new, um, as you can see there, walnut and um, glass effect case, um, which which makes it fit quite nicely on your, your telly stand, really, rather than necessarily in your office or in your computer room. It, it can be used in a, in a range of places without looking too out of place. Um, it has the advantage of um, having full full size HDMI ports rather than uh, micro HDMI ports, and it integrates a two and a half inch SSD inside there, 
and, and comes in a range of off-the-shelf models, I guess, and, and bespoke models. If you want something specific and we can make that fit, we can add extra layers to the case if you need extra height. There's a whole range of things we can do to make that fit exactly what you need, be that, again, for, for RISCOS or Linux or whatever. Um, the, the delta effect of the case you can see there, um, the, the kind of off square shape of it, um, and there's plenty of room for the, the Wi-Fi hat, and it, it's proved to be quite popular with people wanting to fit the Wi-Fi hat inside with or without uh, the real-time clock. And you can, you can stand it up like that, or you can lay it flat, depending on how you prefer that to be. Um, we, we've done different versions with different coloured end plates, different coloured mid slicers. People want a, a whole range of things that goes into there. And I'm not sure what the bit about the standard ITX case is there. I think that's prepped through from somewhere else. And, and we've got those ready to go now. Um, off the shelf ones are literally, as it says, off the shelf. Um, but we can customise those to meet your specific needs. Um, what we're currently working on as well is a way to close off the end of the case. Uh, that came out of some work that we were doing on the um, piano, which I'll, piano, whichever you want to call it, that I'll show you later. But it, it gave us some opportunities to do some work uh, around closing that off, but leaving all the venting um, for the air to escape. Um, it, it does have sort of fairly substantial passive cooling in there. Uh, but we, we find people often do want the reassurance of a fan. Um, so we've looked at that, and especially if we close off the front front side, um, that's going to be a, a, a useful thing to be able to do. Um, the, the Delta Pi Lite is a, is a literally slimmed down version of that. We take a few slices out because there's no hard drive in there and there's just a USB drive. Um, there's an internal USB port uh, that we use for that. That that obviously all leads to a, a reduction in price. And again, on our new pihard.co.uk website, there's a customization form for that. So you can say exactly what you want it to be. Do you want two, four, or eight gigabytes? And how much USB storage do you want? What size uh, SD card do you want? And anything within that. Um, again, we can add extra slices. We probably can't take any out because I think it'd be a bit too small for the adapter board, but we can add bits in depending on what you want. And we can do different shades of wood, different uh, end plates in different materials, pretty much whatever you want. As, as somebody said at the Wakefield show, it's like the red bubble of the, the Riscoff world, really. Um, now, the other one which, which we're doing at the moment is, is the Fortress, which is, uh, in a bit of a departure for us, is, a, is an off-the-shelf case, a, a, a very nice off-the-shelf case, which is why we looked at it, because it, it's quite a substantial piece of kit being made sort of largely out of aluminium. And because of its um, heat dissipation uh, system and an active fan, we just set those up to run at 2.147 gigahertz out of the box. But they very rarely get anywhere near um, 60 degrees. They, they, they mainly top out at around 50, unless you're running, I, I don't know, something like uh, uh, an emulator at, at full pelt for a long time. Uh, but we've um, had some uh, fan control software uh, implemented for that. Um, which means that the fan can run at, at varying speeds at varying times, depending on how hot the case is, um, which keeps it ticking over nicely at, at really low temperatures. The, the fan and the uh, heat dissipation of the case uh, does manage to keep it particularly cool. Uh, it, it has a, a, a dual drive system in there um, with uh, an M2 SSD drive for... Um, reliable storage uh, as alongside the, the SD card that the um, firmware comes on 
uh, and we use the rest of the SD card for for backup. So we've got some software that, uh, to all intents and purposes, hides the SD card from the end user unless they want to see it, which has proved to be a bit of a saving grace in some cases, uh, where people have, have kind of mocked up a boot sequence on the SSD, but the the copy that's on the uh, SD card that's been hidden and haven't tampered with is is an easy uh, drop in to get that going as well. And it's got um, a, a hidden GPIO access panel uh, as well with a, a little magnetic cover, which I tend to find really useful because the, the size of the case is, I'll, I'll show you, is there. So minuscule really in comparison to to most other cases with that kind of capability. It, it fits really nicely in your pocket. So having the cover for the, the GPIO panel is really useful when I drop it in my pocket and go somewhere else. Portables are great and I've got a, an arm book myself and I like it, but most places I go um, tend to have a keyboard, a mouse and a monitor that I can just plumb into. Um, I just take one of those and it's a, it's a lot easier to do that um, than carrying around a laptop, which is quite obvious because that's just in, in my jacket or my back pocket. But that, that little cover for the GPI, GPIO ports um, does really well there. Uh, it comes with two gigabytes of um, software as standard, and then there are some optional commercial add-on packs uh, available for that, including games packs from uh, Tony at Amcog uh, that are, are available as optional extras. Some people might want just standard run-of-the-mill software. Most people, I suspect, have pretty much got everything they need. So a few little bits of freeware here and there that they, they might have had once and have lost or they might not know exists um, is quite useful. If they want that extra bit, there's the uh, commercial software that they can add on. And if they just want to entertain themselves with the computer, then as we saw this morning, um, Tony's games are going to keep you amused for hours. I'll be off to speak to Vince after this, see if we can bundle those as well. Um, because of the, the nature of the Pi 4 with the uh, high performance memory, uh, it, that's been useful in terms of how much we've got. And we we might be able to use two gigabytes if we're really lucky. We might in a few years be able to scrape four. I'm not sure anytime soon we'll be getting near using uh, eight gigabytes, even though it's available. But, but the speed of that um, makes a, a, a massive difference when combined with the uh, two plus gigahertz um, CPU. It, it, it makes a massive difference to the um, the performance of the machine with, with people commenting that it's it's effectively doubled the speed of some of the things that they were doing on uh, those machines with slower processors just by uh, upgrading that. Uh, and then we, as I said, we had um, software written to control the fan, but it also controls the, um, the entire power for the system. Um, uh, so it, it allows it to power on from an external switch that's built into the case, um, power off from that same switch with a, a, a set double press. And when you power down from the desktop and you see the little box, box that says you want to reset, um, after a couple of seconds, the, the I'll show you this in a minute, the little box disappears and the machine powers down completely. So hopefully I should be able to show you that in practice on this video. Uh, the guy who did the programming said he spent far too long doing this, but he wanted it to look like a, a 1970s uh, telly on BBC Two at 11 o'clock. So you can see it disappears completely there. And then after a while, it, it goes off. So um, as you'd expect with a, a Pi based system, it's got uh, the gigabit Ethernet port, four available USB ports for RISCOS, obviously running at RISCOS. Uh, USB 2 speeds rather than USB 3, um, but it does have the advantage of the uh, full-size HDMI ports with up to 4K graphics output. And although it's not mentioned on there, it has a, an AV port as well, 
uh, so that you can take audio directly into headphones rather than just over HDMI, um, as would come as standard, really. So um, some of the other things that we've looked at is we're, we're rolling out a system of over-the-air OS updates. So when we've tested and checked uh, a new uh, operating system, you can click on a, 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 an app on, on the computer, which will check our servers to see if there's a new version. If there is, it will allow you to install it. If there isn't, it, it'll tell you to come back later if that's what you want to do. And if you install it and you decide it's not for you, it will roll back to the previous version. And that's without anybody having to log on anywhere or do anything like that. It's just a case of using the software, it logs into our servers, um, gets that update. If you choose to, to go rogue, uh, as it were, and install your own operating system from the Riscos open downloads, then that's fine. If you run the uh, update system later, it will check to see what you've got and say, look, there is a newer version available. If you want to have a go with that, you can do. Um, there's no pressure. You can use it if you want. You don't have to. It doesn't make any difference. It, it, it's a, a pie after all. And then one thing that, that we're working on, we've hit a bit of a, a stumbling block for now, but we're, we're trying to work on it, is to boot to Linux from within RISCOS and then back again. Um, and I've got a little bit of a video of that. Uh, it takes a while um, just to get started because I was trying to record it with um, an HDMI recording software. And boy, that's not as easy as it looks, is it? Um, it, it took me quite a while to get one that would do anything with any level of clarity. And then I, when I'd got one, the amount of pause that you get is, is sometimes difficult. So it looks like the Linux loader for the titanium, and we did that on purpose so that it, it it's at least a consistent view. Click on the load, you can see some Raspberry Pi firmware stuff there. And uh, what looks like the rainbow screen of death, but isn't. Um, and after a brief while, A brief while. And there we are in Linux. Okay, so so that's without me doing anything other than clicking on a penguin, which is not a nice place to be on a Saturday afternoon. Uh, as you can see, Linux is working as you would expect. That's a really nice website. A couple of things yeah. to look at there. Uh, from the, the Rock Show, to be fair, the special offers for Rock members is still live, bizarrely. Uh, a look at some other, other really nice um, websites, um, just to show that, that that's working quite well. I'll let you absorb all that. And, and there's the option to just go off and buy those. Now, that will have changed today because we've updated it with our new computer, um, which I'll show you in a minute. Um, okay, so we'll close the browser, and then you can see the little icon there. Double-click that. Computer will shut down. A little bit of Raspberry Pi firmware in a minute. There we go. Uh, a very nutty splash screen coming up. Any minute now. There we go. And it's rebooting back into Riscos. Now, at no point did I have to touch anything other than the mouse button to click on the icon in Riscos to get into Linux and the icon in Linux to get back into Riscos. So we've got a few little issues to iron out with that that, that shouldn't take long. Uh, mainly around um, renaming cards um, and stuff like that. But once we've got that resolved, we should be okay. Okay, so the next thing we're going to talk about is the um, Piano, the Piano, which is a, a, a new system that that we've just developed. Uh, it, it's based on a, a media center kind of approach to things. 
um, with frosted uh, effects there and a, a nice small case. It's got a, a fan built in at the top um, and, and it's got some passive uh, heat dissipation inside and then venting slots that you might be able to see through there um, just to, to allow it to cool a bit better. Can stand it either way up. And when it's in use, there's some soft glow illumination through the frosted, uh, frosted acrylic that I'll, I'll perhaps show you later on. Um, it's got a simple internal USB drive for extra storage, uh, as well as the uh, micro SD. And uh, again, there's easy access to the GPIO. And again, it's designed to allow you to fit a hat, maybe a Wi-Fi hat in there. As with the Fortress, it comes with two gigabytes of software as standard with optional packs for extra things that you might want. And it's entry level in, in as much as it's the um, it's the, the cheaper end of the range. Um, so it, it comes in at £139 for a, a base model. Uh, and again, has the, the usual ports you'd expect, twin full-size HDMI ports. And, and that dedicated audio port. And uh, as you can see from that, um, you can see the matte effect on the acrylic rather than the usual gloss. And we, we've carefully crafted it so that any retaining screws for anything are, apart from the four corners, are held inside um, and not exposed. So you can stand it anyway up and it'll, it'll be a nice smooth flat surface. And then with the glow, that, that's the machine actually turned on and it, it's perhaps not as garish as that looks on screen, but that's kind of the effect that you get. The the, the blue LED in the fan mixed with the red and, and uh, occasionally green of the pie gives quite a nice shimmer to that. Okay, so uh, a couple of other things we're, we're doing at the moment. Um, we're uh, working on doing um, a, a, an ITX case uh, for the Pi 4. We've got an uh, adapter uh, at the back uh, to, to fit in the back to carry a Pi 4 and an adapter. We've been working on some software for another off-the-shelf Pi 4 case. But when I say off-the-shelf, unfortunately, they're a bit like um, rocking horse um, poo uh, and quite difficult to get hold of. Um, so we've kind of got that on hold for a minute. We're going to do some more work on the easy dual operating system so that you can run Linux and uh, RISCOS on the same thing. And, and again, if you come last, people have stolen your thunder. And we were working on some ITX stuff with a, a carrier board for the Compute 4 module. Uh, we were hoping to have one here today, uh, but I don't know. Post seems slow, as Chris Evans alluded to earlier when he was talking about that Brexit thing. So, well, there you go. Uh, time for questions, if you've got any. Andy, can you save the files between RISCOS and Linux? Um, you can, because we use um, a FAT32 um, disk in, in the process. So as long as you save it to that disk, it'll be available on the other system and vice versa. Brilliant. Um, Andy, any plan for uh, cases where we will be able to um, handle uh, RGB lights via USB for the future? Uh, I haven't really thought about it, but I'm not. I'm sure it's not beyond uh, the realms of possibility. I know I know some people have, have bought a, an off-the-shelf, a, a slightly customised off-the-shelf case, and their plan is to put LEDs inside there as well. So um, it, I'll, I'll ask them what they're doing and, and get back to you. Thanks. Okay, brilliant. That means I either confused you all loads or I told you exactly what you wanted to hear. I'm not really sure. It's called yeah. a stunned silence, I think. Yeah, just just one quick question, Andy. Yep. Wispy, the, yep. um, the orange <laughs> pie version. Yeah. Um, yeah, is that sort of now defunct as 
You see, I, I, I noticed that they've they've developed uh, an Orange Pi Zero Two, which has a, a faster processor, a, a quad core faster processor, a gigabyte of RAM, and a load of other things. It's slightly more expensive, and and then I realised, I think halfway through, that the only advantage of the the Wispy over some of the off the shelf things like the Wispy V. Uh, was the fact that you could run Firefox <laughs> in a window, and now Iris seems to be coming up on the rails. It, it kind of makes it slightly redundant that, that we should be relying on another operating system. That, that sounds sensible. I'm still tempted to buy one, though, just to see. You can't resist playing, can you? No. <laughs> and that's the problem. <laughs> Being told it's not work if you enjoy it. <laughs> so. Oh, that that makes sense. Yeah, I get that. <laughs> yeah, yeah. 